Welcome to my Golden Games and welcome to another Jeep video. I'm going to be installing a new horn on this thing. Let's check it out. I think you guys will really like this one. Here's the speaker. This is actually a Wayland horn. It's what they use on squad cars. You know, it's a really loud horn. It's 123 decibels. Now, actually, by itself, you know, you, you don't have a horn. It's not a siren. It's just a speaker. What you need for the horn is this, a Wayland Power Air Horn Plus amplifier. Basically, this is the hardware. Let's get through here. So we got a PA system that it plugs into, and we got the wires for it. I got extra wire from Fry's Electronics. But here it is, let's check this out. It's got the wiring diagram and everything, so I'm gonna have to do that, set that up. I'll show you guys how to do it. So this mounts inside the car. I'll probably mount it under the steering wheel or something. And then this PA system, or the PA microphone, plugs into there. And then this also taps into the speaker. I'm probably gonna mount it right here. I'm gonna show you that in a second. But so basically, you need this to run this. So this is actually just a horn and a PA system. Does not have a siren, so it's legal. Sorry, it's legal to use in most states anyways. And uh, let's move that out of the way. Here's the mounting bracket we got in here. Now all this stuff you have to buy separate. So it, it's kind of a pain, but you can get it all on Amazon. But this is the mounting plate I decided to go with. It says Waylon on there. So we're gonna set that down. It's got the hardware bolts and everything you need. And then I got some shrink tubing and some extra electrical wires and whatnot. So here's the horn. So basically you flip it over like this and it's got two bolts there. So that's gonna mount to the bracket. So I'm gonna try and mount it here first. I gotta make sure I'm gonna take these bolts out and make sure it actually mounts up to here and fits properly. And then I'll actually, you know, drill the holes out but it's my uh, winch plate. It's pretty thick steel, so it's gonna be a little hard to cut through. So for these nuts, they're actually an 11 millimeter. Let's see right here, 11 millimeter. And you just put it on there. Whoop. Put it on there, and then you can loosen it off. And then we're gonna mount it to the plate and see how that looks. So to get it mounted to the plate, you're gonna leave this top one in, and you're gonna take the bottom bolt out. At least that's the way I'm doing it. And then you're going to grab another one of these kind of bolts, which is right here from the bag. And then actually, before I put it in, I want to get some lubricant on it. Just get it wet on there, some rust preventative. And now we're just going to get this one in here like that. And then we're just going to tighten it down. All right, once you got it on there, that's pretty good. Just make sure it's torqued down enough so these bolts don't come loose. And that should be good. Now we'll be able to line this up on the bumper or the winch plate and see how this is gonna fit. Now we're gonna take the speaker and then we're just gonna set it here and line that up. I did not think this through because I'm not gonna be able to bolt it down like that. But at least now we can get a good look to see what it's gonna look like before we install it. And that's basically where it's gonna look. I mean, I think that looks pretty decent. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. All right, I've marked the two holes, one right there and one right there with the drill. Gonna put a little quick and CLP on here just to help it. It's a little lubrication. That way it keeps the drill bit from overheating. There we go. I'm gonna show you the diagram that it comes with so you can see what we're actually going to be doing. But so here it is right there. Let's zoom out a little bit. I'm using a GoPro, so it doesn't focus that great up close. But just to get a quick overview of the diagram. So here's the rest of what we need. We got a inline fuse right here. And then we got the fuses. It's a 20 amp fuse. And you know, that'll stick right in there. And this will go between the battery and the red wire on here and then we got some more red wire this hopefully will be enough it's 25 feet and then we got some more black wire as well 25 feet as well so i'm going to be starting on this and i do have some shrink tubing down in here as well what i'm going to do next now is remove my old wiring 
that was actually installed from the previous owner for these lights. I'm gonna be removing these because as of right now, they're not working. Somewhere in the wiring, like right there, it's frayed. I'm just gonna remove this, all this old wiring. This is for my winch, I'm not gonna remove that. But for this, um, I'm pretty sure this one as well, that's for my old horn that I installed last uh, fall probably. And it stopped working a few weeks ago, which is why I got this new horn. But there's all this old wiring and everything. Like, I'm just gonna be cutting out this red and black wire. That way I can get my new wiring in and make it a little more safer as well. Saddens me to do this, but let's get in here. Okay, so that actually does have power going to it still. So that was a little dangerous. I'm gonna have to disconnect it, it looks like. I, I didn't think it was working because everything stopped working, but apparently there's still a connection. So I'm gonna go disconnect it from that battery. And then I'll be installing my new horn and everything to this secondary battery, which uh, actually here is for my inverter. It uh, got a little corroded from the winter. Damn it, salt. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to rework on that later. As you can see right here, it just corroded the connections and it just fell apart. Took a little bit of working through, but I got the wires running through the firewall, which I used the same hole that I used as for my winch. So it goes right through there, or my uh, power inverter. I installed it on in the same day. But it goes right through the firewall. There is a grommet there, so the wires won't get frayed. Hopefully they won't anyways. And let's go out here. Let's go around here. And this is where they come out right there. And I got these two running all the way through here. And I'm gonna get some zip ties and you know make sure they're nice and strapped down so they're not gonna be loose and flopping around. They go through the grill down the bottom slot. And I will attach them to the horn once I get that ready to go. The other two wires that are over here are gonna go directly to the battery, which I am gonna need to install the inline fuse on this one as well. What we're gonna do now is just get some shrink tube. So let's see, uh, it's probably good enough just to give it a little extra. So here's our fuse, here's the shrink tube. We'll just put it over the wire. So here's the wire. And just be careful with the wires, there we go. Just slide that over like that. So now we're just gonna strip the wire here. This is gonna be for the battery terminal, the negative. Just ran out to advanced auto parts to get these little connectors here. Just gonna put this in here. Then we're gonna crimp it. We'll crimp down on this as well. Now my soldering iron wasn't really working. It was working for two minutes and then it died on me. So again, I got these crimped connectors here. They're weatherproof from again, advanced auto parts. And I'm just gonna be basically doing this to all the wires. Got those holes finally drilled all the way out and now I'm gonna get these bolts mounted in here. Let's go under the plate. And so we're gonna have a washer, one of these. So just like that. All right, let's just hook everything up. There is no fuse in the wire. You wanna wait until after to do that. Gonna leave it like that for now and we're just gonna test it and make sure it works. All right, so here is the plugs and the wires. We just actually used heat shrink tubing instead. We did use these, but we cut the blue tube off and then just put other shrink tube on. And that's everything hooked up. So this is for the horn, the orange and the brown, and then the red and the black is to the battery. And then the last two uh, right here, these go to the switch, which we can test before we hook it up to make sure it works. We got the fuse in, so let's just quickly tap these and see if it works. Sounds like it works. I took the metal plate out that the switch is in. I'm going to show you how to put it back in in a second. There's four bolts. Let's go over this way. Got the hole drilled out now. Got it filed down so there's no rough edges. And there we go. It's all clean looking. Now hopefully the switch will fit. So we got the switch right here. Let's just unscrew this. To make sure it's tight, let's just get this wrench on here 
and make sure that's tightened down. Don't want to do go too tight because it is just a little plastic piece, but just enough that it locks it in. Got the little switch wired up now, and we're gonna be figuring out how much length we need once we get and get this back inside. Got a new solder from Harbor Freight because the old one stopped working on me. So now to put the plate back on, there's one screw there, one there, one there, and right up there, we got the switch right in place. Now we just gotta get this plate back on. It's like in the light bar install, it just pushes right up against there, two screws. Welcome to the next day, guys. So right now I'm gonna try and remount this. I had it under the seat just sitting there, wires everywhere last night. So today, now that there's more light out, I got some double-sided duct tape. Well, that's the brand of the tape. Uh, I forget what this stuff is called. I bought this thing like a year or two ago. So uh, anyways, it's double-sided, really good tape. It's a little foamy. I believe it's like emblem tape kind of for cars. You know, it's double-sided, it's foamy, super strong. And uh, I'm gonna be peeling this off in a second here. Got zip ties just to, in case to make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. And where I'm going to mount it is, let's see, let's go in here. So here's the pedal. And it's gonna go way up in there and to the back. So I, I don't have enough hands or room to get everything in here with the camera. So I'm gonna go put it in there and show you what it looks like. All right, I got it mounted. I'm not sure, it doesn't really look like it's flush to the back, which again is why I used the zip ties, which I got the zip ties tied right around the power cable there. And hopefully that'll hold it in place. Once I drive around for a little bit, I'll know if it's gonna work. But I'm gonna cut the zip tie ends off and then get all this wiring somewhere up here out of the way so it doesn't get caught on the steering column or anything. All right, let's check it out. Looks like all the wires are clean, right? I think I did a pretty decent job. Yeah, I know, that's a little messy looking there. <sighs> Looks kind of scary. But uh, just don't pay attention to that, you know? As long as the wires are out of the way, they don't get stuck on anything, don't get wrapped around the steering column behind the brakes, we should be good. I think everything should be good. Let's go do a walk around and see the whole setup again. I completely forgot about this piece right here. It's the mount for the microphone. Just pulls right off there and mounts perfectly right there. It looks really good. I think it's a good spot. I put it back there. And it might be a little in the way of my feet, but it's not a big issue. I may uh, actually tie strap it right here. That'd probably be a good idea. Just so the cord right there doesn't get pulled. I'm gonna do that right now, actually. After I tie strap this, I'm gonna go do a full walk around of the Jeep and show you the setup so we can do once over of the final product. So let's do the final walk around, see the final product. I think this is a really good spot for the speaker. Let me know what you guys think in the comments of the location. But I see them on squad cars mounted on the outside all the time. I, you know, I only got one. I could probably always add a second one. That might be kind of cool. But uh, this thing's like over 100 bucks. So, you know, it's not really needed. But you know what? If you guys think I should get a second one, let me know. But uh, here's the mount. I think that looks really good. I got it zip tied here, so it's out of the way. I'm not gonna catch my foot on it. And it should be good with the doors on as well. Right now, you know, I took the doors off. Yesterday they were on, but I think that looks good. Uh, let's pop her open. All right, so let's do the final walk around. We got the wires going through here, connected to these wires that are zip tied to here. And they go around this way. Just need to make sure they don't get caught in here. And so far, so good. Uh, we got these in here. Uh, for my inverter, I did get new connectors, so I'll be doing that later, but I'm not gonna do that part of this video at all. We got them connected to the battery here. They go through the firewall over under here. And you guys saw that huge mess, but uh, it's decent right now. It's out of the way anyways. Got it going over to the switch which has this little sticker. It said to mount the sticker next to the switch. I don't know if that's legally required, but it's what the company recommends. And here's the switch. And we got this right here. Testing one, two, three. And let's go in front and see how it sounds. Uh, what are you doing over there? Uh, radio check one, two, three. Uh, let's see how that sounds. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what I thought in the comments below. I do want to get your guys' feedback. Hit that like button. Have a great day and see you next time.
Maybe consider subscribing if you haven't already.